I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. At a flea market recently, I bought three mid-century teak objects, uh, all needing different levels of restoration. I've got this little uh, plate here. It's made in Japan, but it's teak veneer. I don't know what its substrate is. This is a solid bowl, a nice little bowl made out of solid teak, and it's not marked in any way. This is a really nice serving tray. Uh, designed by Jens Quisgaard for dance, and it needs the most extensive restoration of the three pieces. I'm going to start with the one that I hope will be the easiest. This little tray, I'm going to see if I can just clean it with some steel wool and my oil and wax polish. But first, I want to touch up some places of the substrate that are showing, and I'm going to experiment on the bottom first. Okay, I've got a very light color here. It's called Honey Maple. Let me try that. This seems to be working well. It seems like it's the right color. I'm hoping that the polish takes care of most of the grainy parts that are showing. But I'm going to try this on a larger area here where I see the substrate. Now, this is a little light, but that's good. It may need another coat. All right, I'm going to try these bad ones on the top. This marker is almost too small for this, but it's fine. I'll just take my time, and if I have to go over it twice, that's fine. That's better than being too dark. Okay, I'm going to try the polish. Okay, this, uh, the wax polish seems to be helping it a lot. I'm going to do the bottom. I'm going to be very careful that little sticker. You can see those little scratches kind of disappear when the oil and wax hits them. All right, I'm going to let that uh, polish dry for a while, and then I'll go over it with a paper towel. Now I'll tackle the bowl. It needs a lot more work than the tray. The first thing I'll do is clean it with some dishwashing detergent. This bowl looks great when it's wet, and so uh, this is wonderful. This is what it'll look like when I oil it. All right, I think I've got this really clean. I'll just give it a quick rinse and then set it aside while it dries. All right, uh, anytime I use water on an object, I uh, let it dry overnight. You can see some of the discolored areas, you know, coming back now, but uh, I'll sand it tomorrow. Okay, now the tray, and it needs uh, some more repairs. I've got to glue some splits, but I've got to add some wood where it's missing. Right. Now, it's missing some pieces of wood, but before I uh, put new wood in there, this end is broken, and I'm going to glue this up first. There's a piece of metal in here going across here that that's pivoting on. Okay, it's good. Okay, this, uh, this is glued up really well. So the next step is going to be to cut the pieces I need to replace the wood that's missing. And that's a little tough. I, I've got a lot of uh, pieces of teak here, scraps, from another job. It seems to be a lot darker and browner than this teak, which is particularly light and reddish. I think that's since ultimately I'm going to sand this to look like new because of all these bad scratches and stains. I'm thinking that the next step is I'll sand this so I can get a better idea of what the color is and the type of wood so I can choose my best piece of teak. Okay, this is dried well. All the discoloration came back, which is fine. And I'm going to sand with a hundred grit and I'm going to sand till all that discoloration is gone.
Okay, I've sanded the tray up to 150. And uh, funny, most of my pieces of teak were much darker than this, but I finally found one from a friend that's uh, maybe a little bit yellower, but a little bit lighter than this, which is important. The next step is for me to cut out these damaged areas uh, well enough so that I can glue in a piece of new teak. Now, you'll notice that the saw I'm using is an old saw that has plenty of teeth missing, uh, thanks to a former employee, but uh, that's the saw I use working around this piece of metal. You know, as I was getting ready to cut this, I know I said I was going to cut this at an angle, but because of this metal rod that goes through this handle, I think I'm better off cutting all the way across and putting a piece in all the way across. I think that's going to make it easier for me to work around this metal rod. Alright, I feel like I've uh, pretty much cut through everywhere that I can. So I guess I just start chiseling away at it until I get that block out of there. Okay, so now I'll cut out the other little piece that I need. Now as I get deeper and deeper here, I'm trying not to cut through. I want to leave the back of the bottom of the tray rather intact. But I'm getting awful thin here. I'll see how close I can take it. So yeah, I think I've got it. Here's the exact shape of the bottom. I'm right down to it. All the chip part is gone. So I just got to see if I can carefully clean this up a little bit. And then we'll see about getting a new piece of wood in there. So here's my piece of teak. This has got a little bit of these brown streaks coming up. Was running through there. I got a little bit of brown streaks here, so I think I'll take that piece from this area. Uh, this piece over here is pretty plain. I'll probably just take it out of this area, so I'll cut off this end of this piece of teak and start whittling these pieces down. Okay, so now I've got my piece of wood cut that I'm going to use in this space. I've also cut the piece of wood that I'm going to use here. Now I've still got to deal with the reinforcing bar that goes across here. So I'm going to cut this piece of wood in half. And I'll tape it back together. and drill a hole. Uh, looks pretty good. Now I need to do my next uh, little piece here. So I'm going to choose from my pieces of teak here 
I kind of like this one. It's the same color and the grain is very plain. The first step would be to cut this down a little bit closer to my thickness. Now I need to trace the shape. I used to always use paper to do that, but I learned on a YouTube video by David Termini to use tape. Pretty good. I'm a little fat here, which is good, so I need to take a little off that side. Alright, I've been back and forth to the sander a few times. I, I feel like that's about as good as I'm going to get it. I'm just going to have to rely on a little bit of putty to fill the gaps there. If you remember, I was missing one of the feet on the bottom of the tray. Uh, it was doweled on. A lot of these dowels were missing, and they were a metric size. So I drilled them out to 3 sixteenths. I milled up a piece of teak, lined it up with the dowels, marked it, and drilled it on the drill press. Amazingly enough, it actually lines up. So now I need to cut it to the proper length and shape it and then I'll glue it on. Now I need to shape my repair pieces here. I, I kind of wish I'd taken a little bit more off this big piece before I glued it up, but I didn't, so I'll just start sawing away everything that I can. Just keep looking down on this shape and try to get this curve as symmetrically as I can. You begin to notice though as you work how, how imperfect the original handle is. This is why I'm glad I left the, the bottom of the tray here when I put this patch in. All right, now I think I'm going to uh, start sanding. I'm going to start off with some 60 grit and a block. I can't believe how brown that teak is. And my piece is brown. That's a little bit uh, lighter, which is good. Uh, I can deal with that. I've thinned out some uh, medium brown maple dye stain. See how that looks. I'll try it on some scrap wood. I think it's going to work pretty well. I might need to sand away that where I wiped outside the line. Okay, now I'll try the top. Okay, now I'll let that dry for about an hour and I'll give it a coat of oil. Okay, so now I'll, uh, I'll give it a coat of oil, and I'm going to use uh, some uh, non-toxic pure linseed oil. Although this tray is not the kind of tray you might put food directly on, it is somewhat food related, so I just want to use uh, something that's non-toxic and it's kind of a gentle oil. Alright, I'm going to uh, let this dry and We'll see how it looks tomorrow and see if it needs another coat. Okay, so I've let this dry overnight, although uh, dry is a relative term, it's still a little wet, uh, which is fine. This is really slow drying. So what I'm going to do is uh, take some 600 grit wet or dry paper, the black paper, and I'm going to sand this and then uh, pat it completely off with a rag.
All right, now I'll find a nice warm place and let this dry. So here we are, three mid-century teak objects, uh, all needing different levels of restoration. Like the plate just really needed to be cleaned and oiled. It sort of is what it is. This bowl got sanded and re-oiled. And of course the tray needed extensive repairs in the handle area and then total refinishing. So three pieces, three levels of restoration, uh, not bad for a flea market fine. I think they look pretty good.